feels like 2021 just like <laughs> hammered me. <laughs> really? So it, it just started too, which is the crazy part. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of work, but we'll, we'll get in track. Yeah. Cool. No, I'm excited. So basically what I want to do is first of all, obviously thank you for taking the time. I know, like you said, 2021 is already slamming you. So I know you got a busy schedule. So I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm really excited to kind of like run through this kind of new segment idea with you. And I appreciate you being so receptive to just kind of trying anything out. And yeah. just going with the flow. So what I want to do is kind of just throw the mic to you first before we get into the show and how it works and stuff. And just let you give, you know, some context and some insight into who you are and maybe some of the things you're doing right now. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Perfect. I'll, I'll just like go with your lead and then I'll, yeah. I'll wing it. <laughs> sure, no, no. That, that's that's the first question i'm just gonna like oh my god <laughs> Dora, this podcast is raw it's simple and okay. our editor is gonna make things look so beautiful okay got it okay got <laughs> you okay that's good um so hi guys i'm sandy and i am a content creator um i would like to say i'm an entrepreneur by day and then a tiktoker by night so what i I do is I share business tips and tricks on TikTok. And then when I started my first company at 19, which is a pet accessory business, I realized that there's not information, that not enough information out there in the public. A lot of people gave way it, right? Um, so I decided to share my journey and any tricks, any tips I have on TikTok. And from there, um, because of my authenticity and a lot of tips I share, does resonate with a lot of my audience it kind of blossomed and then i was able to second uh, founded my second business which is small business tips that's awesome can you can you touch on so obviously doing the research i saw the pet uh the pet business yeah. can you just explain explain a little bit about you know why you started that and then kind of what where that is now if it's still around or if, you know you transition fully to small business tips yeah so i started that because well there's a few reasons. I absolutely love dog. I have two of my own. And then I am just obsessed with entrepreneurship in general, the concept of it. And of course, it's not sexy. I didn't need the money at the time. So I had to figure out something. Um, so at the time, starting a business seems like a, a right way to go for me. So I started it. I started out as a drop shipper because I didn't have enough money. So I started out drop shipping. And then once I got enough money out of drop shipping, I put that into my business and I started out just hand sewing all my bandana collar oh, wow. leases. Yeah. And then I was managed able to scale that up and then found a production center, outsource it, everything. And scale that for 2.5 years and ended up selling to one of my close friends. Um and then I transitioned into TikTok. That's awesome. That's like such a cool story. I love the I love when the stories are like literally the entrepreneur like making something by hand or learning a yeah. new skill to make it happen. Oh my God. It makes it's it so crazy. much better. Because at the time, I didn't have the money to find it on like a manufacturer. And the, the most reasonable thing is to hand make it myself. So I literally remember I went into a sewing class, learn how to sew for one class, spend $200 in that class, $500 on my sewing machines. It hurt me so much, but I'm so glad I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, and then with, with SBT, Small Business Tips, what is the, what's the goal? Like, what do you want to really achieve with this account or with that business? And do you also service clients through that? Yeah. So there is two segments of SVT. So one segment is um, kind of consultation wise, um, me helping different companies, tech companies, small businesses, varies a lot of them. And then I service based off of business operations and marketing strategies. Um, and then another segment is we're creating an e-learning proto. So this proto is that it's a very low entry barrier because it's gonna be like $20 per month. And we're gonna partner up with different creators, founders, come on here at this platform to provide video contents to share how do you actually kickstart your business or scale your business. So it's essentially a hub and a community for young entrepreneurs. I love it. And I actually saw your TikTok on that. <laughs> I think one of the mo things that intrigued me most because I feel like obviously you're not going to learn this stuff in school. So like having a, an online learning platform or school, whatever you, you're going to call it yeah. just for the next gen of entrepreneurs and even guys like myself and girls like yourself, that's so huge because it's just not out there. And, you know, you can get as much content as you want from YouTube and Gary Vee and all these like big guys. But I feel like when it comes from the content creator you're following or someone you really trust, like the authenticity and stuff, like it just goes to a new level. So. 
I'm yeah. really excited to see what you do. Thank that. you. Thank We've you. been working on it for a while. Um, but yeah, we're we're launching in, in March, so it's gonna be interesting to see how awesome. it goes. So launches in March, you said twenty dollars a month potentially is the cost. Yeah. And they'll basically we're, we're, yeah, we really try to like push down the cost because we do right. do a lot of research on pricing and other people's pricing and then we think that it, it's it doesn't make sense to price it higher than that. Hundred percent. No, that, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to it and checking it out. And honestly, for $20 and trying to target entrepreneurs, that's like a, a good price. Like people, I feel like are so much more willing to pay when they know it's going to affect their business or their personal brand. So, okay, that's awesome. We got some good yeah. kind of context insight into Sandy. Um, so I'm going to explain this show concept. Usually when I do the podcast, so it's called the Find Your Breakthrough Podcast, like the original one. And basically our slogan in the lab is to help, is to find your breakthrough. So we want to help people find multiple breakthroughs throughout their lifetime. And those breakthroughs or those progress happens in the lab. You know, right now you're in the lab working on your business, your brands, your, all your different things. And it translates much more than just being like a basketball brand with all the stuff you can kind of see on the floor <laughs> kind of behind me. So this is like a new segment where I was like, I want to bring on some cool guests that are, you know, becoming really well known for what they do. And instead of doing like always like a one hour, or two hour talk about your life and everything else. It's like, how can we condense that into like a 30 minute show that is really dope? And people will be like, oh, I can get all the tips I need by, you know, uh, taking in the content super fast. So you're the I first love that. thank you. And you're the first person doing it. So it's cool that I got you because like you are actually like a, a big person on social media. So again, I appreciate your time. And I think this will be like a really dope episode. So basically, I have like 20 different things that I want to ask you about. Yeah. I think they're all super easy. Plus going through your social media content, I feel like you're an expert on everything I'm going to ask you. So it should be really dope and hopefully you'll be able to provide just some extra tips and insight along the way. And then I have a little timer on the side. So, Oh my God, I'm on the so, timer. <laughs> yeah, so no, so basically what's going to be like when it, when it's edited, first of all, thanks to Dylan, my editor, when he edits it, you know, we'll try to keep every topic to at least three minutes. That way, like it's not overwhelming for the listener, but I'm pretty sure some of the stuff we're going to like breeze through within a minute. So it'll be super. Oh, easy. Awesome. So like I said, first guess, I'm excited to have you. Thank you again. And I'm going to hit the timer. <laughs> we're just going to start talking about stuff and keep it super chill and have fun. Okay. The timer's going on for our first topic. First one is TikTok tip. So you have like almost 350,000 followers on TikTok, over 2 million likes, crazy stats and analytics. What are some TikTok tips you can give to whether it's someone who's just started or someone who's seasoned really trying to become maybe the next Sandy? Yeah, I have three tips. So first tips is, you as a person is your niche. I, I like how other guru are like, hey, find your niche, but the best niche is yourself, your personality, your story. So your niche is you. So figure that out. What is your voice? Find your story and tell it. TikTok is all about storytelling. Second, before you get on TikTok, find similar creators that are similar to what type of content that you will be creating and look at what they put out and observe it. And then start interacting with their in, um, content and their followers to teach the algorithm that this is type of con the type of content that you want to be seeing. Right. So then the algorithm is going to understand that, hey, this is what you will be posting as well. Third tip is just try it out. Post tons of different ton content to try it out. TikTok is like a playing field, right? And no one's going to see what you try, what it do wrong, what you do right. It's for yourself to experiment and to see what work and what doesn't work. I love it. I feel like the one of my favorite things about TikTok is what you just said is like, like I've you know you post the crappiest video or whatever it is, and that one's that's the one that gets a million likes. You just yeah. never know what video is gonna hit and allow you to gain these followers. That's why, like I tell people, like the easiest thing is just to just do it. Just yeah. just like anything in life, just go out there, post your content. But I like the tip you said about engaging with. Um, People like, for example, like if I'm an entrepreneur, I should go engage with your content and other entrepreneurs like that to help the algorithm. So that, that's actually the tip I've never heard anyone say. Really? So, yeah, I've yeah. never heard anyone say that. So that's that's awesome. So I appreciate that. Um, nice, simple three tips. So the next uh, one I have is Clubhouse. So basically, I just want to get your thoughts on Clubhouse. I don't know if you've been on there yet to do any talks. Yeah. I think Clubhouse is like super unique and cool. So just give me your thoughts on it first. Um, Clubhouse, I implore, I'm chlorized on this one. So I like Clubhouse because it, it provides that intimate connection sometimes. 
with smaller group, smaller room, you are able to connect with meaningful people um, in that sense. And you can spot out who is really who they say they are, like authentic or not, if they're really baloney or not, because you can hear that through their talk. There's no do-over. There's no, hey, let me edit this out just right away, live. Um, what I don't like about Clubhouse is the FOMO within it and then the fakeness sometimes because there's so much going on on Clubhouse right now. It's very hard to filter out what is real and what is not real, right? And right. there's so many room going on and people trying to sell things, people trying to pitch their business, which is great on their end. But as a consumer of Clubhouse, you really need to be intentional in the room that you're entering. And why are you spending time on Clubhouse? Is it just because of the FOMO or are you actually getting things out of it? I really don't spend that much on Clubhouse. When I do spend time on it, I'm either talking or I am there intentionally hearing a piece of content that I want to hear and get out of there. 100%. No, I like that. I like, I like that you said just be intentional. Because yeah. yeah, I've noticed hopping on Clubhouse, you know, obviously trying to go hopping every day, just see what's going on. But now there's just flooded you know, it's with fire. different rooms, different speakers. And it's like, man, like if you don't know what you want to do or who to trust, you could yeah. just get, get lost in the rabbit hole. So exactly. yeah, the last piece I'll ask you on that is, do you think it'll be like a billion dollar valuation? Do you actually think Clubhouse will be huge? Do you think it may fall off? Um, I think that it won't in the near future, like one or two years, it will continue to be here. But I do think that if they don't change the structure of the app, right. it will fall out. Yeah. Um, I think internally, there's a lot of things that they need to work out, especially the apps itself. What makes the app so special is the people who's on it. It's not actually the app itself. Absolutely. So how are they going to keep the people on there, but at the same time, streamline everything on the app? That will be very crucial for the development in the future. Yeah. As of now, $1 billion, I really don't think the, evalu the valuation is where it is but you know i am i'm not that you know evaluation person yeah, we're not business so, evaluators so yeah yeah so uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no that's fair enough those are good tips too you gave kind of to how to you know they had elon musk the other day and people were complaining like they need the incognito mode they need to oh, yeah. more people in room so there's just so many things i know they can improve on which is uh great that's funny that beeper went off so that's a timer so anyways okay <laughs> <laughs> moving to the next topic uh creator economy Okay. So I'm just going to keep it super vague. I just want to hear your thoughts on the creator economy because that's what we're in right now. That's what we're going to be focused on for the next X amount of years with the surge and the power of creators. So what's your thoughts on that? I am all about creator economy. I think that a lot of people are starting to realize the power within themselves and starting to realize that they, everyone has a voice to talk about in different fields. And I think everyone will be some sort of creator in the five years round. Um, and everyone will have the potential to make money as a creators. And with startup nowadays, that I'm working with a lot of different tech startup, the, the most things that are talked about is creator economy. Right. And it, it will be a huge surge within the next five years. I can guarantee that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And this kind of builds on to the, the next one is who are your, some of your favorite creators or I'm sure you're following the creator economy, like so, like Mr. Beast, maybe some other ones who are like really <laughs> paving the way for what it's going to become in the next ten years. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite creators that you just enjoy watching? I love you saying Mr. Beast. L lately, I've been on the rabbit hole of Mr. Beast okay, content. Crazy. He he is um, absolutely a marketing genius. He not only utilized his content, his himself, but or utilize the people around him, build a story around him for people to get engaged with it. So he's a person who I'm studying constantly. Yep. Um, other creators are educational based. I love Taylor Price. Uh, Price is Tay. She's on TikTok and Instagram. She does financial tips and tricks. Another great one is The Real Margot. Um, she does um, mar mortgage tips. And it's just so interesting that you can turn such a dual topic, finance and mortgage, and then it's a fun topic, right? Um, so these two are beautiful people. And Nastasia, 
Um, she is two-time founder, Nasty Fit and Connectful. There's so many of them and I'm surrounded by so many amazing people and creators in general. But if you just go around to your favorite creator on TikTok or Instagram, put a drop down or people who they follow, go through their list yeah. and then you can find some gem in there. 100%. No, I, I like that tip. Do you think Mr. Beast is poised to be um, YouTube's first billionaire? Um, that, I don't do you know. Think that's possible to attain? Oh yeah, for sure. For him, he's he's what 22, 23, right? <laughs> so he, yeah. it, it's insane. I I know that PewDiePie is like uh, the most subscribed, mm -hmm. but I think that Mr. B's contents and his follower base are a lot more engaged. You can see it on his views. You can see it on everything. He even opened a burger joint. Like this guy yeah. is a marketing genius. The the burger joint. I watched the podcast um, with his team read. Mm -hmm. Um, Blake, the guys behind it, and like those guys are geniuses. Like to do, oh, yeah. to do the burger joint the way they did, and crash the apps and sell out, and now they're planning to do like you no know, even more restaurants. It's like it just yeah. shows the power of the creator, right? Like what can one individual really do? And yeah. Mr. Beast is, I think he's like creating the framework for you know the next gen to follow. Yeah, he's definitely insanely amazing and uh, Dobrik as well. Um, oh, yeah, but yeah, for sure. yeah, if he offered me internship, I'll quit everything. I'll be like, Yo, you don't even have to pay yeah. me. I'll, 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 I'll you, you, David, Yeah, I've been doing this content for years. He brought out the $100,000 puzzle, which again, I thought was marketing genius to, yeah, anyways, these guys are like just ahead of their time and their teams are doing great stuff. So I'm excited to see like what other creators are going to be coming out with stuff. But mm -hmm. we'll keep moving. Um, so timer's back on. So I need, to ask you this question, can you give five tips or if you want to give more, but just five tips for new small business owners? Okay. So number one, streamline your processes internally, operational processes. A lot of people with uh, small businesses, they don't streamline their processes. That meaning shipping, um, no taking, organization, nothing. It, a lot of them don't have it because a lot of them are solopreneur. But because they're solopreneur, they think that you don't need it. But you need to start thinking like you're a startup and not a small business in order to scale. Mm -hmm. So streamline your processes. Second, get your finance and legal in check. A lot of them do not have this down. Yep. Doesn't know what is a you know, accounting system or anything like that. QuickBook is going to save your life. So open a QuickBook yep. account. Um, third, social media is the way to go. Uh, pay, I don't know if, I know a lot of people say pay ads is the way to go or anything like that, but not everyone has the money to do pay ads. So social media is definitely the cheapest way, but it's so powerful, especially TikTok. Yep. And fourth, stop giving yourself excuse about like, why isn't people buying? Why isn't people looking at my contents or anything like that? Go out there figure out what's going wrong and then fix it. Stop making your excuse. Because a lot of small business owners like to make excuse for themselves. And I was a victim of, of that as well when I first started out. Um, but I really set myself down and I look at what's going on, what's going on within other company and start to implement that within myself. And the fifth, I would say, let's see, mindset, have a growth mindset. You know, stop limiting yourself within just small businesses. Think bigger. Where can you branch out? Hire interns. It's okay to not do everything yourself. I love that. Did, did, did those tips come right off the dome, right off, right from your head? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I, I love that you're like, like I said, I, I love that you're able to just kind of speak on that. And you gave five great tips and growth mindset, like so important. Cause I think a lot of, a lot of people underestimate that and like, don't think that way. So love it. Um, Thank you. And that was actually perfect timing too. So oh, really? okay. yeah, perfect timing. It was like 10 seconds left. So you killed it. Um, so number six, favorite tools for entrepreneurs to utilize. So what are some of your favorite tools that you could recommend? To, oh, I'm assuming there might be a ton. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I'm going to give a few. So first one, the notion for sure. Notions. Um, you can take all your notes, task, workflow, everything all in one place. And that's notion. There's a huge learning curve with Notion, but it's definitely worth it. All my team, everything uses Notion board. Now, the first one, second one is copy.ai. I hate copywriting and I hate doing my product descriptions, talking about anything copy. So this AI is insanely amazing. You put in what you kind of want to talk about, the detail, I guarantee it's going to generate a 
like a copy that it sounds like a person write it. Try it out. Amazing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, a third one is Trend.io. A lot of people use this one use collaboration with um, influencer and stuff like that, right? So Trend.io will help you find like influencer to collab with. So Trend.io is a great one as well. Another one is um, Slack, of course. Slack yep. keeps you communications with everyone else. Um, productivity, why I love using um, Reclaim. Reclaim app is a great place to block out your schedule, remind you to eat, remind you to deep work and everything like that. You, you can integrate that with Google Calendar and it's going to help you organize your life. Um, and then Headspace is a great mental app that helps you meditate, um, and help you stay focused. Do I have more time or that's it? You have, you have more time. I'm not going to cut you oh off. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm like scared. Okay. <laughs> okay. So another one I want to mention is Brain FM. So I get distracted easily. So Brain FM is going to play music that help you focus on work specifically and help you get into that flow state. So that's a great one. Product Hunt. If you want to talk stay on top of what's going on within the latest tech industry, Product Hunt is your savior. It's gonna tell you what's going popping off every single day and you can go from there, look through the list. It's gonna talk about everything that are popping out every single day. Another one is Side Hustle Stack. Side Hustle Stack is a great tip, um, a great platform that gathers a lot of tons of information that you can make side hustle money off of. If you're a small business owner who needs more side hustle money, go to that website. It's going to tell you how to use it. Um, I'm going to do one last beacons. So oh, beacons is the better version of link trees. So it allows you to do literally integrate your MailChimp on there, integrate everything on there. So just check it out. It's absolutely amazing. Life savior. I love that. Those are, those are amazing more than I even expected. <laughs> and I just want to say like Notion. It's crazy because I've always been looking for an app similar to Notion for like the last year. And for whatever reason, I never found it. And mm -hmm. then like two days ago, someone on Twitter, marketing Twitter posted. Then I was going through your stuff yesterday. I saw you make a post on Notion. And then I finally got on it. And it's like, man, to have this whole platform to organize our team and have like logos and tasks and mood boards and stuff. I was like, man, this yeah. is what I've been waiting for. So like Notion... I highly recommend to anyone listening to that to check that out. Um, okay, that was that was awesome. And this actually goes into what you just kind of said. The next question I have is, what are some of the best side hustles you think for 2021? A lot of people are always looking for that. So what would you recommend? Um, so I like to say that focus on what you love to do and what you're good at and what can you do all the time first, then go into picking out the side hustle. And the, there's so many ways. So you can go on Fiverr, right? You can freelance, you can be a social media manager, a ghostwriter, or, you know, content creator, start a YouTube, start a TikTok, something like that. Um, you can flip clothes, go on Goodwill, buy tons of used clothes that you think looks great, start a thrift shop on Instagram. That is a great way to get you started. And Notion, if you love Notions, create a Notion template, sell it on your website, sell it on Etsy, right. launching on Product Hunt. There's so many ways that people can make money nowadays. People shouldn't be not making side hustle right now. Like this is the easiest digital world to make money right now. I totally agree with you. The way that you like kind of think outside the box, like you said, make a Notion template. Yeah. Like those mm -hmm. are like the simplest ways to make money. There's like you said, there's just so much out there that people want. And like, you know, some, sometimes I don't know where to go. So I'll, I'll go to Fiverr. I'll ask someone to try and find it. And people are making good money off these like side things. So I love it. Um, the next one is Shopify. So I'm, I'm, I'm super big on Shopify, especially when you're trying to build out an e-commerce brand. Um, you know, we, I've used it for years. A bunch of our clients use it. Some of the biggest brands in the world use Shopify. So mm -hmm. I just want to get your thoughts on Shopify. And if you have any thoughts on e-commerce in general, you can, you can share it. Yeah, so I've I've used Shopify for 2.5 years and it's it's been my life for a while, but now I stopped using it <laughs> because I'm not in e-commerce. But Shopify is probably with the, all the comparison that I've made with all these different website builders, Shopify, Shopify had the best backend system for all the e-commerce people. The shipping is amazing. 
you can, there's so many integration that you can utilize for your marketing in different ways that you can um, talk to customers, customer service, affiliate marketing. So Shopify is the way to go if you're trying to build an e-commerce stores. Um, e-commerce store is a great way to get your foot out the door and it's fairly simple, right? You create a product, you sell it. It's simpler than tech, I guess. But to do it well, you need to make sure you have a differentiator within your shop. What is your value propositions, you know? 100%. No, I like that. Um, so let me ask, is this, this, I didn't have this written down, but I feel like we should just touch on it quickly because I think you have a lot of insight. Can you give some just quick t- drop shipping is like a massive thing, right? Everyone thinks they yeah. can do it. There's a million people on TikTok doing it and selling courses and it's just blown up to this crazy thing. So you did drop shipping and that transitioned to you having a successful business and doing things like you're doing now. So yeah. what are some tips or some insight you can give on just the drop shipping world for someone who is looking to get into that as a side hustle? Um, so I do drop shipping very briefly and because I didn't like it. Um, because I am a very transparent person. I really didn't like drop shipping because, okay. um, I, I have, o- I'm, I'm an OCD person and I like to have control over the quality of my things. And with drop shipping, you aren't able to do that. So I think it depends on your goals, your business goal, and what do you want to do in in life, right? So maybe dropshipping would be the way to go. Then good for you. There's tons of ways that you can do that. You can buy from AliExpress. You can dropship it. You can use Overload um, that integrate with Shopify. You can also do print on demand, sell t-shirts, sell different merch. Um, there's tons of ways that you can go about it. But to do it well, I don't know if I'm the person to ask. To be honest. No, perfect. I love I love your insight. I think just now the point is just like, it's so easy to create a brand now. Like anyone can go online and make a brand, whether it's like it's a product from China, a t-shirt print on uh, demand business. There's just so many ways uh, yeah. to do it. So let's kind of, sh- we'll switch gears a little bit here. And I want to just kind of get to know your daily habits a little bit. Like what, what are you doing on a daily, you know, your daily routine, your daily schedule that's putting you ahead of the next entrepreneur coming up? Yeah. So um, I used to be like, oh, I need to wake up at 7.30 and then like, meditate and then have all these right. routines down. But then I realized that every single pe- person has a very different way of life and very different way of routine. And I'm a night owl. I found that my flow stage and what I, when I work the best is in the afternoon and at night. So yes. my morning and my team is based on the West Coast and I'm based on the East Coast. So my morning is from... I wake up around like eight and then start my day at nine. Between nine to 12, that's my time. That's what I do, what I do. I walk my dog. I do what I do. Uh, I drink my coffee. I have my little Mis- Mr. Beast moment. <laughs> you know, I don't watch it. <laughs> you, you know, and then um, then I start going about my day. I do meditate. I, I found that it's very easy for me to think about very different things all the time that have a hundred tasks on my mind. So I meditate every single day, um, but I just don't do it very early on. So I wake up, walk my dog, meditate and start my day, checking my emails and getting into the flow state after that. I usually have a lot of meeting pack up. So I usually schedule my meetings dead in dedicated days. So I have block off okay. days to work. Um, so to be successful and to have that, productivity going i think it's all about thinking about what works for you and go with that and what works for other people might not work for you 100 percent. I, li- I like that you didn't have a cookie a cookie cutter answer and it was like yeah i wake up at seven and i read a book and i do this 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 and i, I like that you're just very like yeah. <laughs> just chill it's like you do what you do you have your no. time and you just do you go about your day and that's what works for you and you know flow state is something that i've been like learning more about actually like People like yourselves have been talking about it, seeing other YouTubers talk about it. So it's nice to under, to see that like people are taking that seriously and trying to get into that that state of mind because that's when you're like the most productive, right? And I think people yep. I think people miss that, especially entrepreneurs. They don't understand like what that is. But I enjoy getting to that state of mind. And I know you do too, where it's like everything's kind of blurred out and you're just yep. you're working on these, you know, set things to kind of grow yourself, your business. So that's great. Um I want to talk about your TED talk briefly, because I saw that. I thought this was really cool. Um, every, I, there's so many people that want to, I want to do a TED talk one day. That's always like people's goals. Like, how do you do that? So I guess my question to you is like, what was that experience like? 
I feel like that's such a cool thing to have on your resume. Thank you. So, oh my God, that tech talk took probably three to four months to prepare because it had it was a process. So they reach out and I confirm, and then there was like a set schedule that you need to hit everything in, um, yeah. rehearsal and everything like that. So my tech talk is I because it's Zoom, right? Um, so it will film on Zoom, and then they are supposed to film it, and then they film it. The audio didn't go through. So oh I goodness. ended up having to film it again <laughs> by myself. <laughs> of course. Then I'm like, okay, well, this is fun for me. But no, it was such a great experience um, by talking to uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and aspiring people who just want to get out there and do what I uh, love. So my topic on TED Talk was tr- um, turbulence. Turbulence in life and what I've gone through. Um, and you might think about who, 22 years old, what can you have gone through, right? Um, I, I don't think I've gone through a lot, but I definitely gone through a decent amount that I can think I can help other people get through that hump. Um, but I don't, I, I'll, I'll continue to have turbulence in life, but um, it's just such an interesting topic for them to reach out to me because um, my mom had cancer and I shut down uh, my business for half a year because of that and quit college for that as well so from there they were like hey i think you will be the person perfect to uh, talk about this topic that's amazing and what uh when did the t- uh, the ted talk actually go out so i did that in when was that october i'm pretty sure october and, and they have been editing for <laughs> they reached out to me to refilm it like a month ago so i refilmed that send it over I'm, I'm hoping it'll get out on end of February. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> <laughs> hoping <laughs> they're very slow. Like the TED talk after they're sold back the up. Process. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. So again, kudos to you for doing that thing. That's like such a cool, especially at 22, to have like that experience and something like that on your resume. I just think that's that's so amazing. It just goes to speak to high volumes of who you are, and like who you're going to become. Um, what are some common mistakes? So obviously. Through what both of our lives, we made tons of mistakes, right? It's the whole part of being an entrepreneur. Those mistakes are actually learning, you know, learning opportunities. What are some of the most common mistakes you think are made by first-time entrepreneurs? Yeah. Uh, thinking that they can do everything. <laughs> so yeah, I think that a lot of people think that they don't want to hire more interns. They, they think that they know everything. They want to do everything by themselves. No, entrepreneurship and companies build by team, not by person, not by one person. So I think that realizing that and realizing that you don't know everything. You, there's people that can do things that are better than you, give that power to them so you can do what you do the best. I think that's one common mistake that a lot of mm-hmm. first-time entrepreneurs make. Um, and then another thing, not networking enough. A lot of people just head down and focus on building and building um, and don't focus on networking and distributions. I was on the um, on the t- talk with Ryan Hoover, which is the founder of Product Hunt. He was talking about people usually just focus on building all the time, and I completely agree with that. I forgot about distributions and networking with people, and how do you distribute your product out there? So I think that a lot of people did these two things wrong: think that they can do everything by themselves and forget about distribution and networking. Yeah, it's really good. The the second one uh, I really like as well, because I I think I just think that that's so true and it gets lost, especially first time entrepreneurs. You know, you're obviously learning, but uh, that's a really good one. Okay, what are some top books that you could that you recommend? Maybe for first of all, I guess the first question is, are you a big reader? No. I'm okay. Not. So <laughs> so now I'll I'll spin it back on you anyway. Are there any books that you would recommend that maybe you have picked up and you have read? They're like, oh, that's actually a good read. That's helped me. I am not a big reader, but I did pick up a few books that I like. Um, one is Deep Work and then yeah. Lean Startup. So these two books are more focused on like, I would say you already have some experience on entrepreneurship and then read these books. They can really help you change some mindset and help you integrate some of the work that they could, they've done in the book and integrate that within your startup. But for a starter, if you're a starter, I really don't know what book to recommend. I'm not. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me ask you this instead, because um, a lot of listeners actually will be around around your age, and I think at the and at the end of the day, not everyone likes reading books. They're not sexy. They're not fun all the time, right? So where what do you turn to 
for a learning resource? Are you turning to like Substack newsletters, YouTube? Like, where do you like to learn podcast? I learn in a lot of different ways. So I learn mainly in talking, communication with okay, other people. So I love hopping on calls with people that I absolutely don't know and just ask them a bunch okay. of questions. That's what I learned the best. And another way is to just listen to podcasts and look at YouTube. YouTube podcasts and Google is my best friend. And I'm just a person who, if I don't know something, I go in the rabbit hole of Googling and just Google the hell out of it until I know the topic. So there's not one specific place where I learn things, but I'm subscribed to a bunch of newsletter all the time. So I'm, I'm familiar with what's going on in the world and what's changing and not. But social media is one of another thing that I learned the most. So I will follow so many people, educator on social media. And if they talk about a topic that I absolutely love, then I will go in and do more research within that. And consume it. Yeah. I, I think that goes back to your point you said earlier in the podcast, which is like networking. To me, that's like a form of networking, right? It's like you're following these people, you're looking up to them, you're watching them, consuming their content, and then you're engaging with them on comments or posts and just getting to know them. I think that's like the best way to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same, like same thing for me is it's like newsletters, podcasts, and YouTube are like so key because you can consume it in the background, right? You can have breakfast, like I so have your morning coffee, you're watching Mr. Beast, whatever it is but you're still yeah. able to kind of like, you know, learn something from it. So that's cool. So how about this? Five traits. You don't have to give me five. It could be any amount of traits of highly successful people. Like what do you think are the key traits that make successful people, you know, like yourself? Yeah. Um, the first one definitely being growth mindset. Without that, you, you don't have, you aren't able to go to where you want to go because you're fixated on where you are right now right um so first one being the growth mindset and second one being knowing how to delegate um a lot of people in a higher position they don't have the time and energy to do everything so knowing how to delegate and learning how to say no um learning how to say no at the right time can save you a lot of time and money as well fourth one let me think habits i feel like they always have the people that i know that are successful and the people that i interact with they always have a way of with people they always have a way to story tell and they know how to engage with people in the right way to translate across the right message and story if that makes sense yeah yep. i love yeah. it those those are solid and then um we're just gonna i'm just gonna keep moving because we're getting into like the last like kind of few here okay. Yeah. I think they're, all, they're all pretty solid ones. So first thing is just like, I'm trying to give as much feedback as I can to like some of the entrepreneurs who are, are going to listen to this and, you know, just maybe getting started or may just be overwhelmed and confused. So this one is also for them. So analytics, a lot of people don't like analytics, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's one of the driving forces behind like how you make changes to your brand long-term and how to pivot and how to grow. Right. So the question I have for you is what's your thoughts on analytics when it could be social media, it could be e-commerce just, just in general. And then if you have maybe like a platform or a tool that you recommend to you know, take advantage and maybe, you know, be able to use those better. Yeah. I don't like analytic as well. I don't like numbers, but it's so important. <laughs> it's, it, it is what it is. It's so important <laughs> because without it, you want, you're unable to make decisions because based on what, what, what type of data are you going to make decision based off of, right? So a great tool that I like for social media analytics is called Minter.io. Um, it's a great place and super clear. It laid out all your social media analytics and generates even report for it. Okay. Uh, I think it has a free version as well, but I would suggest if you do have the budget upgraded, you are able to access a lot more data within it. And you said it was called Mentored.io? <laughs> Minter, M-I-N-T-E-R, bio. Yeah. Cool. I just I, I try to write down some of these tips you're giving so I can like share it with you <laughs> after. Because I'm sure people yeah. are like, what did she say? I'll be like, well, here's the link to it. Yeah, no, there's so <laughs> many. I have like a master list of the uh, a tool that I use. I'm thinking about categorizing them into just like a notion board for people to look cool. at. Yeah, that'd be, that actually would be an, an awesome resource. Um, okay, cool. You've, you've given so many like cool little, uh, like brain, I, I have like tabs, like brain FM, copy.ai. Oh I, I'm opening it because I don't want to forget myself either. Cause I want to yeah. make sure you give this back to the, you know, the people listening. So that, that's awesome. Um, going back to kind of your journey, 
on TikTok, social media, with SBT and everything you have. How did how did you grow? Like, what was the key? Was it you know? Was it just hey, I went viral on TikTok? Was it something else? Interestingly, I never really went viral on TikTok. I never went okay. like crazy viral on TikTok. I think the reason why I grow is because of my consistency, authenticity, and ability with connecting with people, right? Um, people want to see a piece of themselves within you. And how are you going to let them see that? How are you going to translate that? And for me, it's being completely honest and vulnerable sometimes with my audience, either on screen or through my live sessions and different ways of doing that. And the more authentic that you do and present yourself, people feel a wavelength for some reason, even though through a phone screen, he can, people can feel that if you're authentic, if you're baloney or if you're real. Um, and for me, I'm always very consistent in my messaging. I want to help. And that's always been my missions and my messaging throughout all my platforms. Right. Which is so key because that obviously people are coming to you because they know what you're going to provide. But then like you said, you have the authenticity. You're consistently posting the same thing. Like I went through obviously the content and it's just like, you're not just teaching like one thing. You're giving tips on all kinds of like platforms for business owners. Like I said, it could be side hustles. It could be a motivational tip. It could be, you know, the next big platform, whatever it is, like you're covering so many angles and you're attracting all kinds of entrepreneurs to your content, which is, you know, which is huge. I think a lot of people kind of miss that and maybe get too narrow. So that's why, and you're also doing the dances. You're using the, <laughs> I know, right? yeah. the dance moves. We'll, we'll talk about that off. off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. It's actually great because that's something I found was like, you're making the content fun, right? Yeah. And like by you dancing, it's like giving me and the the viewers like access to like, oh, this is like, this is like Sandy. Like, this is like who she is. She's like yeah. super chill. She's cool. Like, and she's not afraid to put herself out there, which I think a lot of people are re respecting of that, you know? Yeah. I, I like dancing, integrating with that because it, it, for me, I need to have fun too yeah. when I'm creating content. So acting, dancing is always making my filming more enjoyable. Yep. 100%. So with everything you build with uh, SPT and, and maybe some other ventures you have going on, can you touch on just quickly how important it is to build a team? So important, but building a team is so important, but so hard. Yeah. Finding okay. the right team and finding a way to keep the team together, move forward together is even harder. And that's something that I'm constantly working on and learning on how to be a better leader. How do I be a better boss, better listener, right? And I always tell my team that you can come to me with everything. Mm -hmm. um, because without a team, there's no business. So building the right team, building a good workflow, a good structure is so crucial for any startup, any sizes. No, I like it. So let's say, I'm happy you said that because like, I feel like it's so underrated in terms of how hard it is to find quality individuals. And then also like, you know, if you're the entrepreneur, you're the owner, right? You want to find people that like can relate to you, maybe have like some similar interests. So there's like, it's more so like they're just your worker, but like you want to create those like friendships and just have other things. And it becomes hard, man, especially when you're trying to like build a, a brand to find all these different roles. And then obviously when you find a role, like you don't want to get rid of them in two months. You no, know, you're hopefully going to have them for the, next five years to grow with you right so yeah just going through the whole process of you know we've been building a team like we have like 10 now and i'm just like trying to like continue to grow and learn like okay now we need uh, a brand a new social media manager and now we need like a paid marketing special and it's just like all these like new things and it's like man like trying to find those people is like can be tough at times it's yeah. hard yeah so but, hard. but i love it like i said it's a process of us being entrepreneurs and building something new so it's for me it's like you know, what I live for. Um, so that, that was great. Last like two questions, basically. Let's say someone's about to launch a clothing brand, a makeup brand, whatever. What do you think is like the most important things for them to, you know, focus on like day, hey, day one, like I got this dope product, these dope, whatever clothes, like what should they focus on? Focus on your customer, focus on your audience, okay. find your target audience and focus on them talk to your customer all the time 
hop on a call with them, send out a survey, um, DM them on Instagram or TikTok, anywhere. Talk to your customer, figure out what they want to see on your social media, on your product, on your website. They're going to be the determinators of the success of your business, right? So focus on your customer, talk to them, hear them out, and fix your business iterations all the time based on their feedback. I love that. I think that's, I think that's, I think it's underrated because not a lot of people understand that the audience is so key, right? Like everything you're trying to build right now, who's going to buy it or who's going to support you? It's exactly. your, fans, your audience. So I love that that was like your main tip. And I want to just leave it there because <laughs> it was awesome. So um, you're making content all over the place, TikTok, social media. I'm sure you have a team also helping on this SPT social media because that page looks great. So kudos to your team for Thank making you. it look so nice. Cause I, I love when a page like has that kind of design focus. What are just some content creation, you know, maybe keys or tips you can give to the listeners? Yeah. Well, I don't take any credit for our Instagram page because <laughs> my, my social media team, she's amazing. They're, they're insane, but we use Canva and we usually create, um, I think we have 20 to 30 templates that we use um, that we kind of created out for different types of purposes. And every single day of the week has a different, um, like a different content. So we have different content pillars and Tuesday and Thursday is a tip Tuesday, um, tips Thursday. So setting out content pillars and then have template that you can pull right off the bat when you are just creating content that's so helpful and speed up the process even faster. And I always ha- tell them that, hey, save a bank of things that you just saw on social media. So you have to be constantly evolving and not post out the same content, right? And people get bored if they see the same thing all the time. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree. So look, I don't even know. I kind of lost track of like what the time was, but I think it was like 40 minutes. So yeah. you, killed, you killed it. We ran through a, a whole bunch of questions. Hopefully you had like some fun. Kind of like I was able to maybe potentially keep you on your toes. I don't know if I did or not. Oh, yeah, it was great. It was so fun. <laughs> you did a good job answering everything. So what I want to say is, again, thank you for coming on. This is my first time doing, like I said, this segment. So I'm excited to see like how I can how we can build it out. Maybe yeah. have you on in the future again to kind of give some more tips and kind of just continue. The thing I love doing is like, first of all, so social media. But through COVID, it's been so much easier to connect with people. Yeah. because everyone man everyone's at home like if you don't answer dms now you're just i think you're just a mean person but oh, like, <laughs> it's just so easy you know like to connect <laughs> it's just like no, I'm so it's bad at yeah <laughs> don't worry that's why it's like you send a tweet to someone you get them on your show and like now we have a connection now we have a relationship so like i want the listeners to be like oh sandy's dope i want them to follow you and then maybe six months or a year from now, we kind of get you back on and do an update. So people are like, oh man, I totally remember her. She gave all these dope tips. And now your experience is going to be way higher a year from now to kind of continue to build. So yeah. I said, thank you a million times. I'll say thank you again. No, thank you for kinda, amazing platform. No, I, thank you. Thank you for that. And I want to kind of give you the floor if you want to just say anything last minute, but if not, if you don't, sometimes when I give the show to my guests, so last time I'm not going to, I'm just saying this, cause I don't expect you to do this, but he had like a poem prepared, like an inspirational poem. I have some people talk about a movement or a charity. A poem. Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was the best ending to one I've had. But there okay. could be a cause you want to talk about. Maybe there's a last minute tip you want to give to entrepreneurs. But if there's none of that and you just want to keep it chill and simple, you can just let everyone know where to follow you. So I'm just going to leave it to you to decide. Okay. You give me so, so much pressure. pressure now. <laughs> okay, it's like I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to plug myself and say something. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so should I start now? Yeah, yeah, the four okay. words. Okay, so I'll say in my last word, and I, I close the same speech um, with my tech talk with this quote. So whenever life throws you a curveball, catch it and throw it back even harder. And always remember that if you are seeing a dark tunnel right now, there's always a light at the end of it, right? Um, and everything happens for the right reason. So, well, that being said, you can follow me if you guys want to follow more motivational tips and tricks more business advice you can follow me my business at sbt wait at small business tips underscore <laughs> everywhere on tiktok and instagram i love it thank you again make sure you guys go follow up sandy she's doing a lot of dope stuff and i'm sure it's gonna be one of the next you know big up and coming entrepreneurs